Good morning. Hot Aki. Can you tell your seatmate, Merry Christmas? <laughs> On the first Christmas, the song of the angels to the shepherds goes like this. The angels said, Give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among the people who please God. You see, peace is very, very important to all of us. We want a world without pain. A world without fear. A world without war and hatred. We want a community that is hallmarked with brotherhood. With friendship and mutual care. Where pain and loneliness is immediately met by concerned neighbors. We long for a family where there is no misunderstanding. A family where there is mutual respect and love and care. We want a world with peace and compassion. The good news of Christmas is this. God is offering peace in the world through Jesus Christ. This peace begins with peace with God. And as the angels announced, peace among people. There are many facets, facets of the Christmas message. Christmas talks about love, about salvation, about harmony. But on top of that list is the message of peace. But peace is always elusive and fragile. For example, the Society of International Law states that during the past 4,000 years, there have only been 268 years of world peace. In other words, they're saying 85% of all history is filled with war. And in all those years, over 8,000 peace treaties were made, and all those treaties were broken. You know why? Because true peace cannot be found outside the world. It's not found in governments, in treaties, or institutions. It's found first and foremost with the peace that comes from God. Duke University even made a study about how do people have peace of mind? And they found several factors that contribute to people's peace of mind. They, and they found out that peaceful people inside are not being suspicious and resentful. They also discovered that you can have peace of mind when you are not living in the past or you're dwelling on your old mistakes and past failures. Because 
They found out that people with peace of mind are not wasting time and energy fighting conditions you cannot change. Inasihat yan tiyo, huay uping ane lang, imbo, uh, uitiyo in bo hatang kay pene kong kiyang tihale kang ko. And not being withdrawn during periods of stress. Inasihitu tiyo, ching su te lo ay si chun, inasihboy tihya kay ki kok ko tuang tok dip kay ki chike. In other words, they don't isolate themselves. They force themselves to be with people, especially when they have problems. People with peace of mind, they found out, are not indulging in self-pity when they are down. And they're not being cold-hearted. In other words, people with inner peace, they cultivate love, they, they have humor, compassion, and loyalty. Upeng ane lang ina si ehaw tiha tiha pa lang kwan sim lang ehaw dim bin lang. They also found out that people with more peace of mind they they are not expecting too much of themselves. In other words, they are more realistic with their personal goals. So when they fail or may make mistakes, they accept themselves. Sige upeng ane lang in boy tui ing kai kisu ke ke thaw ay yao kiu in boy ah in chus ehaw chap siung kai kie si pai in boy tiha chong ing kai kie ah thaw ay yao ang ko ki. And finally, the study shows people with peace of mind, they're not becoming self-centered or egotistical, but they find something bigger than themselves to believe in. It, it, it is very interesting to note that this scientific study points to a reality that says, Peace is not a circumstance in your world. Peace is really what's going on inside your heart. For us Christians, peace is not the absence of anger, it's not the absence of chaos. Peace is the presence of something bigger than chaos. It's the presence of God. You see, life is full of worries and stress and strains. Wherever you go, we have, we have problems. Ours is the age of anxiety. Worry is the pervasive emotion of our time. Wherever we go, we worry. Wherever people are, there is anxiety and fear. It's not the place. It's the state of the heart. Probably you've heard the story of the family who migrated to Australia, leaving, leaving Manila because... Manila is filled with crime and filled with danger, filled with fear and filled with worry all the time. So they, they went to Australia to pursue less stress, less worry, less fear, less crime and less violence. After some time, the whole family was murdered by their own son. They escaped the violence of Manila only to encounter violence at their own home in Australia, in a very beautiful place. You see, peace is not the circumstance in a place. Or what's going on in the world? Peace is a condition of our hearts. It's not a situation in your world. It's what's going on inside you that matters most. The Bible speaks of three kinds of peace. There's the upward peace or the peace with God. 
There's the inward peace or the peace of God that dwells in our hearts. And the outward peace, the peace that speaks of our relationship with one another. All of these three categories can be can be sifted through the biblical invitations to experience peace from God. The first is upward peace, the peace with God. You see, God gives you peace when He lives in you. The Bible's the New Testament, for example, five times it says, Our God is the God of peace. That's if we want to experience peace in our lives, we have to invite the God of peace to rule our lives. This relationship with this peace with God is foundational to all our pursuits of peace. Without God, without the God of peace, all our pursuits of peace in this world will be shallow, superficial, and temporary. Romans 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is the key that we can have this reconciliation with God, this relationship with God. When we receive Jesus Christ into our lives, the result is peace with God. God adopts us into His family. We become His children. He becomes our Father. God becomes our friend. No longer are we considered God's enemies. We have peace because we have God. The Christmas message is really all about that. The Christmas message is about the Prince of Peace coming to us, to live in us. To teach us to live in peace, to walk in peace, to have peace. If we want peace in the world, it should begin with peace in our hearts. We cannot buy that. We cannot manufacture that. It comes from Christ. That's why no matter how much we spend just to have peace, no matter how much activities or treaties or institutions we make just to have peace, we cannot have it without Jesus Christ in our lives. As Paul says in Colossians, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. You see, when Christ dwells in us, we know peace. When we receive Jesus Christ, we experience peace. And we live with peace amidst the chaos and the difficulties and the disappointments of life. Christmas is essentially about the gift of God. And the gift of God is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the only source of genuine peace. Everyone who receives that gift experiences the peace, forgiveness from sins, the assurance of eternal life. That's peace with God. I remember before I, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I live a life of 
pretend peace. It's a life of facade. I pretend to be peaceful and okay outside. But inside, it's a life of turmoil and chaos and selfishness and emptiness. Without Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace in our lives, all we can do is pretend to be okay. It's pretend to be peaceful and in charge of our lives. But the truth is, everything crumbles inside. Everything is empty inside. Everything is noisy inside. We're just pretending to be peaceful. In other words, if you don't have Jesus, you can never have peace. You can have false peace or pretend peace. But if you know Jesus, you will know genuine, authentic peace. Have you found this peace with God? A peace that comes from God? Have you been forgiven of your sins? Have you been assured that you will live with God forever? That's why somebody once said that if our greatest need would have been information, God would have sent us an educator. And if our greatest need would have been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need would have been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But praise God, our greatest need is forgiveness. So God sent us a Savior. That is the message of Christmas. It is an upward peace that we are no longer separated from God. We are no longer enemies of God. We are friends with God. We are, we are reconciled to God. We have a relationship with God. We have peace with God. That's why peace is not a situation in the world. The world will have always injustice. The world will always have pain. The world will always have war and chaos and hatred and division and fighting. But amidst all of that, peace, genuine peace is really a situation in our hearts. It's a condition of our soul. That we are stable and secure and we are intact and we are calm and still amidst the storms. The world will always be dark. But we can light up the world because we have the light of the world. That's why we have the peace with God because we belong to God. The second type of peace is inward peace. This is the peace of God. Philippians 4 says, The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This speaks about the inner peace. It's like the, the power that holds you even if everything around you falls apart. If you're a Christian, you have that. It's very sad. Many Christians are still looking for peace outside when you already have that. We have that peace when Jesus Christ lives in our hearts. 
咱正做基督徒，咱有一款的平安。虽然伊是有时阵咱唔知影，咱伫外面一直咧找平安，但是主耶稣已经赐咱一个平安。It's very interesting. Peace. Can you have have you ever imagined peace to be a guard? The Bible says that peace it guards, it guards, it guards our hearts. 真趣味啊！伫一个警察有讲到啊，平安是咱一个看守员伫遐咧保守咱。It guards our hearts and our minds. 平安伫遐保守咱的思想，咱的心。It guards us against disappointments. 伊对啊，当咱有拄着失望的时阵，也是平咧保守咱。This peace it guards us against worry and against fear. 一个平安保守咱袂伫遐惊吓，还是伫遐咧挂虑。This peace it guards it guards our hearts from anxiety and depression. 当咱有担心，阿是啊，底下情绪低落，这个平安阿是保守咱。If you're a Christian, you have that. You have that. Sometimes we just forget that, so we 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 succumb to worry and anxiety. But you have that. You just have to use that and claim that peace. 咱也是真正基督徒，咱有这个平安。虽然有时阵咱唔知影，但是真正上帝有予咱一个平安。Some of you here today are going through worry and fear. 现在咱有一个人伫遮，在这里啊，经过一个痛苦还是惊吓。Or you're probably probably going through discouragement. 还是感觉失望。Or doubt. 还是咧怀疑。Or depression. 还是情绪低落。Some of you are going through disappointment and pain. 啊是有诶感觉啊失望啊是真痛苦。Or it's just not you're not at peace in your heart. 啊是你感觉你心内无无平安。I pray that you will rediscover and know and experience once again about the peace that passes all understanding. 我祈祷讲，恁有法当找到一个平安，一个啊超过人诶平安。The peace that fills your soul even when you lost your job. 虽然咱有时会失去咱的头路，但是这个平安底下来保守咱。The peace that you have, even if the bills are coming and you don't have the capacity to pay the bills. 等咱来开单、开啊、开单、开开单一直来的时阵，这个平安啊是底下来保守咱。You can't understand it, but it's the peace that that guards your heart, even if your children are a disappointment to you. 虽然有时阵咱袂了解这个平安，但是当咱啊感觉真痛悔，也是真失望的时阵，这个平安底下保守咱。Or even when your marriage is difficult， 啊是咱的婚姻真艰苦。It's the peace that guards you even when the medical results are discouraging。这个有时阵咱去啊验查的时阵，这个结果真无好，但是主的平安底下保守咱。When the future is uncertain。当咱的将来无稳当的时阵 ，It's the peace even when life is unfair。虽然有时阵咱感觉生命真无公平，但是这个平安会保守咱。Paul in Second Thessalonians says, "Now may the Lord of peace Himself give you peace. Notice at all times and in every way. Can you? Is that possible? All times, in every way, in the good, in the bad, in the joy, in the pain." No matter how difficult the storms are, you have peace inside. So to Paul, you can go when Chong Chong Te Chong Ye Ping An Su Ho Lan. 无论伫什么光景，无论伫伫多落时阵，这个是有可能诶。The book of Isaiah says, "God will keep in perfect shalom him whose mind is steadfast." Because he trusts in you. So, ah, the Isaiah so u kong kau, Shang Te su lan zhe ge ye ping an, ye bo shu lan, bo shu lan de xin, ho lan di ha gian guo di ha yi qi lu qi. It seems this peace, inner peace, peace of God, is connected to our ability to trust God. Zhe ge ah xin lai ping an zhi gap lan xin ko Shang Te u guan he. You only have. A quiet confidence that God cares and God is in charge, no matter what happens. 虽然无论什么代志发生，咱内面有这个把握，有相信共识。无论什么代志发生，咱有上帝平安，伊底下管理一切。When you trust Him, 
Tang nan singko yesi chun. Jesus even says, John 14, Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Here it is. And do not be afraid. So yeah, so kong kao iti yok han u kong kao wa chong wai ping an pang ho din wa chong wai ping an su ho din bo lun di ti se chiu tu tiyo siya me dim thang kia hiya amang yu chu. It seems that the, one of the most powerful things that kills peace in our hearts is fear. That's why we worry. We, we're afraid of many things. We don't have peace. We are afraid that our children will turn out to be a disappointment. We are afraid that the future will become worse. We're afraid that our failures will be an embarrassment. We're afraid that we will live our lives alone and nobody will love us. We're afraid that the people we cherish will not accept us anymore. We're afraid that we will not be able to meet people's expectations from us. We're so afraid, that's why we fear and we have anxiety and worry and we don't have peace. We're even afraid that we are not beautiful anymore. We're not handsome anymore. That's why the cosmetic industry and the health industry and the lose your weight industry is, is a booming industry. We're so afraid or we're so worried about how we look. So we're but at the, at, at the bottom of the line, it's really a longing to be loved. We just felt so unloved. We're afraid that we will not be loved anymore. The Bible says if you have anxiety in your heart, if you're disturbed in your heart, if you have worry in your heart, you have to turn to Christ. You have to trust Christ and He will give you peace. That's the only way. But yes, we can, you know, have temporal peace. We can go to a corner and be quiet and meditate and, you know, shut the world and close the computer and turn the cell phones off and we will have temporal peace, but genuine, authentic, lasting, deep, deep peace amidst the chaos and the storms of life is when we are anchored on Jesus Christ. We cannot find peace because we are not in control. We are afraid that we are not in control. But here's the truth behind peace, peace with God. It's the, it's the certainty, it's the confidence that God is in control. We have peace. That's why peace is not a condition in your world. It's a condition in your heart. We cannot control circumstances. We cannot control typhoons and storms. We cannot control the economy. We cannot control crime. But God can give us peace because we know He is in control of all things. 
you will notice that when we when we are under pressure and when we're going through tough times when we pray god does not answer all our prayers god does not solve all our problems but he gives us peace that transcends all understanding you just can't understand you smile at the storm you're confident everything's be, everything will be okay even if the problem is not still solved when my wife many many years ago was in the hospital and the, doc the doctors diagnosed her with a sickness and they said has no cure it's like my world collapsed. And I beg God, I tell you, I beg God for healing and for a miracle, but there's no miracle. But instead, God gave peace. It's the peace that allows you to smile and see that life is beautiful in spite of the mess, in spite of the unfairness, in spite of the pain. When my son was diagnosed with mild autism, my world collapsed. You know what every parent of special children goes through? It's not really the death of a child that really will hurt the most. It's the death of a dream. And you come to God to fix the problem. You come to God to solve the problem, but He does not. The problem is not solved. But He gives peace. Everything is going to be okay. This is the peace that the world cannot understand. The problem is still not solved. The world is still a mess. But you have peace. You can smile at the storm. You can sleep deep. Because there is a father. There is a dad who is in charge of everything. I you probably heard of the story I told you of our seminary president who had a Bible study among prisoners in Muntinlupa Bilibid Prison. And one of the members of the Bible study in the prison is the person who murdered his brother. And so he, he, he led the person to receive Jesus Christ. He led the murderer of his brother to be baptized. But he's not telling him his name. He's, the, the, the prisoner does not know. And finally, the prisoner one day was so happy about what he experienced, the love of God, the forgiveness of God. He asked this person who led him to Christ and asked, I don't know your real name. What's your surname? And this pastor says his surname, and the prisoner started to shake. And he, the prisoner asked, how are you related to the person I murdered? 
，所以这个患人就问伊，看你甲我所拍死的人有啥物关系 ？And the pastor said, "You murdered my brother, but I forgive you because God has forgiven me." And they both embraced each other, and they were both weeping. 这个团队人就该讲，你拍死我的啊兄弟，但是我因着我有上帝平安，我赦免你，所以因就底下啊撒甲满。This is the peace that the world cannot understand。这款的平安是世界无法当了解的。See, crime will be committed against us anytime。有时阵啊，有可能一个歹代志会临到咱。We're not exempted from storms。咱也是会拄着一个荒台。We have no special covering in this life. We all go through difficulties and pain and brokenheartedness in life。咱活在这个世俗，咱无啊特别的保守，咱会拄着一个痛苦的代志。Christians get cancer too. But what separates us from the world is the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Everything is going to be okay. I have a dad who cares for me. 但是咱甲世上诶人无同诶，是咱有上帝平安，咱知影咱诶上帝是咱诶阿爸爸，伫遐咧啊看顾咱。The third aspect, type of peace, is the outward peace. This is peace that affects our relationships to people. The third peace is the one that affects our relationships to people. This comes when we live with one another. This peace is the one that affects our relationships to people. The Bible says, "Make every effort to live in peace with everyone." In other words. It's natural if you have the God of peace living in you. It's natural that this. This God of peace be seen in how you relate, and how you live, and how you forgive, and how you love people. Ah, 真自然，咱有平安，咱就是会有底下听人，底下啊，甲人真和谐。In fact, God discourages us to worship Him if we have not reconciled to one another. 咱的上帝伊无爱咱，甲人无和谐。当咱甲人无和谐时阵，咱甲伊的关系也是无和谐。It's like God is saying it's. Pointless to tell me that you love me. You cannot even love your brother. You cannot even love your sister. Jesus, let us not hear the people. Let us not hear the Lord. The peace that comes from God in us should manifest in our relationships with the world. This peace from God is in our hearts. It should be able to manifest in our relationships with the world. It should be able to manifest in our relationships with the world. Second Timothy says, "Don't have, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. The Lord's servant must not quarrel; instead, he must be kind to everyone." Can you look at your seatmate and you say, "You ask, are you kind to everyone?" Then, Shang Te, I learn, bo kaplang bo ho se. Are you sung it? Then, si im si kaplang ho se bo. Are your relationships peaceful? You see, if there's one thing, if there's one thing that can win the world to Christ, it's our unity, it's our peaceful living with one another. Then, be sure, ah, for such people, to come to the church, 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 to come to the church. But there is, if there is one thing that can keep people out of the church. It's our bickering, it's our fighting, and it's our quarreling. But see, now, yeah, strong, cap, lang, boh, se, cap, lang, one, ke, si, chun. Then, just si, pi, pi, ah, de, ho, lang, boh, ho, tang, lai, kau, chun, lai, bin. Paul says in Ephesians, he says, for he himself is our peace, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. In other words, Christ destroys the wall that divides us between between us and God. And he also destroys the wall that divides among ourselves. We are creating walls, and Christ says the cross destroyed all those walls. No more division. We are all one in Christ. So yeah, so he like go say, "Chung, chung, this is the wall. Let's cut the wall. Cut the wall. Ah, chung, the here like cut the wall. 
You see, peace is much more than you know being saved and, and having a relationship with God. In the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, peace means shalom. It means wholeness. It means completeness. It's like the ideal life. It's like the standard of God. This is how you should live. Shalom is peace. In other words, when Christ comes to dwell in our lives, He restores the ideal. He restores relationships with God and with people. So there's a vertical shalom and a horizontal shalom. Peace with God and peace with people around us. So This reconciliation, this, this breaking of the walls among us, it happens only in Christ. It's, it happens only because of the cross. That's why we are fellow citizens, we are, we belong to one household of God. In other words, we belong to one family, one faith, one Lord, one spirit that unites us all as brothers and sisters in Christ. So, we belong that's why Paul says in Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, no, no more slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. In other words, God invites us to be that church where everyone is welcome, where everyone is loved and accepted and cared for. No more divisions. No more rich or poor. No more male or female. No more first-timer or old-timer. No more young or old. We are all one. No more walls. Peace among us. So, the Bible invites us to be that kind of church. The Bible invites us to become Christians that make up that church. Peace with one another. Who are we? What, what kind of walls are we creating among ourselves? Unintentionally or sometimes unknowingly, we are creating walls. And sometimes unintentionally or unknowingly, we have people that we want to keep out and we have people we want to keep in. But the will of God is like we have been given a ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people to God and reconciling people with one another. This is a ministry. This is our message, the ministry of reconciliation, the message of reconciliation. Why? Because we have a God of peace, a God who is a reconciler and a restorer. Somebody once said, where, when there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty of character. When there is beauty of character, there is honor in the home. When there is honor in the home, there is order in society. And when there is order in society, there is peace in the world. But it all begins in the heart. It all begins with a heart filled with the Prince of Peace, a heart filled with the peace of God, a heart at peace with God, a heart that is at peace with others. 
Will business not happen through institutions or governments or treaties? It happens when individuals experience the God of peace. In Matthew 5, Jesus even said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You see, peace is not a situation in our world. It all begins with the condition of our hearts. The message of Christmas, at least about peace, is threefold. First, we had need an upward peace, the peace with God. Are you reconciled with God? Have you received the gift of peace through Jesus Christ? The second is inward peace, the peace of God. Are you able to smile at the storms of life? Because you, because you have Jesus Christ, are you able to to go through the difficulties and the chaos of the world and still have a peace that transcends all understanding. The third is outward peace, peace with one another. Are you creating walls between yourself and others? Or are you making peace with others? You're making every effort. It's difficult, but you're making every effort to be reconciled, to be at peace with others. That's the message of Christmas. May you, ex may you experience the God of peace all over again. Whatever it is you're going through, disappointments, discouragements, doubts, heartaches, or just painful, difficult existence in the world, may you experience once again the powerful, quiet, deep peace that comes from Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you because you are the God of peace. While this world remain, remains dark and difficult and dangerous, we live in fear and worry and anxiety all the time. But God, we thank you. This is what separates us from the world. We can have peace. It's not about the place. It's not about how much money we have. It's not about who we are. It's about who we have in our hearts that makes peace possible in our existence. Lord, we can have all the security guards. We can have all the insurance policies we can have all the bank accounts and all the beautiful places that we live in but lord real peace happens when we have you in our lives god thank you for this peace that comes from you the peace that reason human reason cannot understand the peace that money cannot buy the peace that institutions and governments cannot firmly establish the peace that human psychology cannot manufacture. The peace that comes from you. Thank you, Lord. We have that. We have that because of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for those who are going through some difficult times in their lives. Those who are going through some 
disappointing times. Those who are going through painful moments and trials in their life, Father, I pray that your peace will hold them, that your peace will sustain them. I speak peace in the chaos in their hearts. I speak peace in every family represented today. I speak peace in every marriage today. I speak peace in every business, in every workplace, in every school. I speak peace in every person today. God, let your shalom rule our hearts as we surrender to your rulership in our lives. In the good and the bad, we know you are in charge. We don't have the answers to all questions, but we have the God who knows all the answers. And that is enough for us, O oh God. Help us to live at peace with one another. Forgive our quarrels and our bickerings and our foolish arguments. Help us to love. Help us to forgive. Help us to reconcile. Help us to be generous. Help us to be kind. Help us not to discriminate. Help us not to build walls. Help us not to reject people. Help us to love as you have loved us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You who began a good work in us is faithful to finish what you began. Thank you because you never gave up on us. Help us to never give up on ourselves. Help us to never give up on you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the peace we have in our hearts because of you. Amen. Amen.